This short story by Andrew Spencer is called Bush Education and is dedicated to Judith Light, a pioneer of reconciliation. Millie beamed bright inquisitive eyes at her mum. She asked with curious innocence, Mum, where did all the black people go? Black people? Millie's mother almost dropped the plate she was cleaning. What black people love? Suds trickled down her arms. Millie looked at her shoes. I saw some children at the edge of the bush, watching Dad clear the trees. Millie spoke softly. They looked sad, but... But... I didn't go near them, Mum. I didn't. I promise. Mother had forbidden Millie from exploring the lands beyond their clearing. Mother put the plate in the drying rack and wiped her arms. She picked up her daughter. Don't worry, darling. They'll be gone soon. You won't have to be afraid anymore. But Millie wasn't scared. In fact, Millie wanted to make friends with the bush children. She didn't want them to be gone. It was Mother who was afraid. Mummy, where do the bush people live? An uncertain crease of concern frowned Mother's face. She answered carefully. Well, darling, they live in trees and in caves. Mostly they don't live anywhere. They're not like us. Oh, sadness tinged Millie's voice. She gazed out the open window, which overlooked a raised landscape. In the distance, Millie's father and uncle were pale dots, surrounded by broken earth and upturned roots. The plough horse seemed to be the size of a mouse. Each day the trees grew further away. Millie missed the trees. She'd live in a treehouse if she could. Her father had promised to build Millie a treehouse when it was safe. Mother explained, If you see any natives, you tell Pa or me, you hear? Her eyes were blue pools of seriousness. Millie parroted, Yes, Mum. When Pa finishes clearing the trees, you can spend all summer down at the creek, and I won't have to worry about you being whisked off by savages. Questions tingled on Millie's tongue, but Mother's expression told Millie, that the topic was off limits. Then an idea formed in Millie's curious mind. She could prove Mother wrong. Adventure glittered in Millie's eyes. Can I play now, Mum? Please? Mother frowned at the thought of the snakes and spiders and endless dangers. Still, she couldn't keep Millie inside forever. Okay, dear. Just where I can see you. No bush. No creek. Yes, Mum. Millie squealed with delight and rushed out the door, holding her idea like a baby bird. She would go exploring. She would prove Mother wrong. She would be friends with the bush kids. Millie hated the ever-expanding ring of destruction that arced the farmhouse. She missed the beautiful landscape. She missed the bird songs and the cool shade at midday. Millie's father sold the timber he felled. Soon they'd have sheep and cattle. Millie wondered if the natives had sheep and cattle. She hoped they did. Then they could share the field and Millie could make friends. Millie skipped past the spindly rose garden her mother tended so frivolously after house chores. She snuck a fragrant rose. Maybe the bush children would like the smell. The men worked from sun up to nightfall. Across the paddock, her father, uncle and cousin were using chains to drag lumber. Millie ran to the tree line. Daddy! Father scooped up his daughter. You be careful out here, love. Mum said I could explore where you can see me. It's dangerous, Mill. Snakes, spiders, and old black Billy, Millie's cousin cut in. Shut your gob, Millie's father snapped. You'll scare her. Let her play, Dan. Millie's uncle spoke over the trio. Really? Millie hugged her uncle's waist. Uncle Bruce scuffled her hair. You're in the bush now, love. No need to be precious. Millie balanced on a fallen tree trunk. She dug grubs out of the sawdust and made chains out of flower stems. Millie was not bored. She was hungry to find someone to share her fun with. Millie wandered over to her father's worksite. Dad, why do we have all this land? Well, love, the king gave us this land after the war. Millie was a little confused. Dad, where will the black people live if we cut down all the trees? Father gave Millie a crooked smile. Who told you they live in trees, love? 
Mother did. Oh, no. Blacks are wanderers. They move about, all about the bush. They don't live like we do. Millie felt her dreams slip. What about this bush? Well, Mill, the blacks weren't using it, and we need it. Oh, okay. What do the blacks eat, Dad? I don't really know, love. Father took off his hat and scratched his head. I do, said Uncle Bruce. They eat little girls in polka dot dresses. No, no they don't, Millie huffed and squirmed in her father's arms. Millie stormed off before the tears came. She heard her cousin laughing, then the dull thwack of her father's clouding his ears. She did not look back. She would prove them wrong. Millie scrambled through the swirling vines and spiking leaves. The day was a song with insects unseen. Enchantment returned and Millie settled into the gentle sway of nature that blossomed around her. Millie kept to the creek gully. She picked up pebbles and interesting things as she explored. Millie wondered if the natives had been here recently. Mother's worry echoed in her head. No, she shook the idea. The natives were bush magic fairies, like in the stories. She wasn't scared. And then she heard them. Millie was cautious. Hello? Millie spoke into a wall of green. Is anyone there? For a long moment there was nothing. Then, like magic, Millie could see him. A boy about Mill's age. He wore decorative paint, fur and grass, nothing more. He was nothing like Mill had ever known. My name's Millie, she offered. The boy was wary. Millie held out her mother's rose. The bright-eyed, brown-skinned youth reacted like the thing was cursed. It smells delightful. Millie smiled and held out the flower. The boy took the rose and sniffed. The boy's smile went from curious to wide, then to beaming. The boy spoke in strange musical sounds. He'd never smelt a rose. Then, out of the distance, Millie's father was calling. The boy jumped back like he'd set off a trap. Don't be scared, Millie pleaded. That's my da. He's making room for our sheep. Maybe your sheep can stay there too. Then we can be friends. But the boy was gone. Millie burst from the scrub, red-faced and puffing. You'd said you'd stay close, Mill, her father scorned. He sent Millie inside to wash up. Mother dabbed at the cuts and scrapes from play. Well, that's what happens when you run about like an aborigine. But mum, but nothing. Mother had an obligatory rant on her lips when father appeared and cut short his wife's concern. In a few terse words, her parents were arguing about the natives. Millie knew she couldn't tell her parents about her new friend. She didn't know his name, but she knew that they were friends. Later, Millie pushed greens around her plate and worried what would happen when there was no more trees between the creek and the homestead. Cheer up, Mill. Her father chimed over his lager. I'll build you that treehouse soon. Millie spent more and more time down by the creek. She had no intention of telling her parents anything about her new friend. The children spent time together in a curious way. Each was a living museum of another world. They spoke in language neither could understand and drew pictures in the dirt to communicate. The boy said, I am of this land. He used pictures to help Millie understand. My home is where the trees grow. Now trees gone. My home is where the water flows. Now water does not flow. Places for ceremony we cannot reach. No animals for hunting. Always scared. The boy said in his language and in pictures. Millie drew a cow. You can bring the cows to our field. We can share our food and water. We have lots of water now that my dad's built the dam. Time passed and the creek was open so that Millie could no longer meet her friend without risk. She took extra scones, muffins and roses to the boy. He shared plants and meats that tasted amazing. Millie couldn't fathom where the food came from. She was amazed by this magic skill. The boy stretched out his arms, indicating everything. Millie saw bush and thought, amazing. Her father's clearing forced the children to adventure further. Millie followed the boy along an ancient bush track. They wandered downstream. Then she saw it. Millie was in awe. The boy had taken her to a special place. Carved wooden poles like trees, stones stacked in sacred patterns, animal skins in the shade, 
circles upon circles, stories carved in timber, intricate craft and delicate weave. The place was magical. The pair lost track of time, as children do. It was almost dark when Millie came tumbling out of the bush. Where the bloody hell have you been? Uncle Bruce grabbed Millie by the arm and dragged her back to the homestead. Millie's mother came bursting out the front door, the setting sun emphasis the mix of relief and disappointment on her face. Father was furious. You had your mother in tears. They sat Millie down at the kitchen table. Explain yourself. Millie had no answers for the angry eyes that demanded an explanation. I... I got lost. I didn't mean to, I'm sorry. But an Aborigine boy helped me find my way back. A black? You could have been killed. Aberrant horror on their faces. Or taken. It's not like that. Millie scrambled for an explanation. I, I found something. What did you find? Father looked tired. Bad things were coming. I... I, I can't. Millie felt herself falter. Then the words flowed like a creak of guilt and confusion. There's a bush playground. There's families and huts and... Millie wanted to say other children, but she knew that this would make things worse. I'm sorry, Millie cried and cried. It's okay, Father cooed. No, it's not okay, Mother slapped the table, filthy little liar. Millie wept. Mother was right. It was not okay. Mother turned to father. You said you'd gotten rid of them all, she hissed. Father set his lip firm. His eyes were filled with sorrow. I'll get it done, he muttered, almost inaudibly. Millie did not sleep well that night. She dreamt of mother's face, the sacred sight, the tree line before it was cut down. Mother would not stay another hour until the blacks were off her land. Millie's father followed his wife's logic. His only interest was in keeping his daughter safe. Millie was powerless to stop the guns and the dogs at sunrise. Millie did not know what would happen. She knew there would be no sharing of the fields, no sharing food, no more fun with her friend. She hoped her new friend would run before the men found them. Just before daybreak, the air was marked with rifle fire, dogs barking and people shrieking. Then there was silence. Millie shuffled into the kitchen. The night's frantic fears had given way to defeat. Millie looked out the window. She could see lanterns swinging in the misty fog. Millie watched the men return. They had destroyed the magical place. Millie's mother came into the kitchen. Help me cook breakfast, she grumbled. They'll be hungry. At breakfast, Millie couldn't eat. She smelt blood in the sink. Nobody spoke. The land was theirs, but it wasn't always. Millie had always been taught to share. She couldn't understand why her parents couldn't share. It was weeks before Millie could sneak down to the creek. The place was easy to find now that the plow tracks had ripped up the earth. The site was unrecognisable, the magic gone. Millie's father had promised to build Millie a treehouse, but Millie didn't want a treehouse. She wanted her friends back, and that was Millie's Bush Education. And that story was written by Andrew Spencer for Raised Ink Press Publications, 2023.